The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Every day, millions of women all over America serve Parquet Margarine because it tastes so good. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You'll like it, you'll love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is. P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Well, it's one of those balmy, starlit spring evenings in Summerfield. The kind of night that's just made for sitting out in the porch swing, serenading your best girl. And that's just what the great Gildersleeve is doing. Honeymoon, keep a shining in June. Your silvery beams will bring love's dreams. We'll be cuddling soon. By the silvery moon. Oh, Sir Ross Morton, that was wonderful. Oh, did you like it? Oh, yes. And where did you ever learn to strum the ukulele like that? Oh, back in college. In my senior year, I was president of the ukulele club. Really? Mm. Well, you certainly can play. Why, you're a regular Yasha Heifetz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... Wouldn't go that far. <laughs> oh, this is nice. Yes, it is, Adeline. Uh, mind if I move a little closer? Well. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till I get my ukulele out of the way. <laughs> there. <sighs> Rock Morton. Yes. Do you know what the day after tomorrow is? Sure, it's Saturday. No, I don't mean that, silly. What's special about it? Well, it's the day they collect the cans. Rock <laughs> <laughs> oh. Morton, don't you remember? Saturday's our second anniversary. Second anniversary? Of course. We've known each other two months. Oh, uh, that's good. <laughs> And you didn't even remember. I did, too. In fact, I was planning a little celebration. You were? What? Well, how about coming over to my house for dinner? I mean, that's what I planned. I'd love to, your sweet. Uh, Adeline. Yes? How about celebrating our anniversary right now with a little kiss, huh? Maybe two kisses. It's our second anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm all puckered up. That's one. That's two. That's all. <laughs> Wish it was our 10th anniversary. <laughs> By the light of the silvery moon. Marjorie, pass the toast, please. Thanks. By the way, children, we're having a guest for dinner tomorrow night, and I want you both to be on your best behavior. Leroy, are you listening? Sure. Who's coming, Unky? Miss Fairchild. We're celebrating our second anniversary. Huh? Your second anniversary? Yeah, we've known each other two months. <laughs> oh. oh, for heaven's sake. Well, the fair sex appreciate these little sentimental touches. Your old uncle learned that a long time ago. That's why he's been so successful with women. Ah! Lira. <laughs> Finish your cornflakes, young man. You're going to be late for school. Okay. Pass the cream, Marge. All right. Oh, there isn't any more. Bertie! More cream! Coming! Here you are, Leroy. Thanks. You're welcome. Leroy? Yeah? It isn't necessary to shout for Bertie every time you want something. Wouldn't hurt you to jump up and get it for yourself once in a while. All right. Bertie has plenty to do, you know. Okay. Well, don't forget it. Eh, marmalade's all gone. 
Buddy Marmalade. Uh, I thought you said... Never mind. Anyhow, I don't know where Bertie keeps the marmalade. <laughs> that will do, young man. Hey, Mr. Gilsey. Oh, thanks. Uh, Bertie. Yes? Before I forget, we're having a guest for dinner tomorrow night, so I wish you'd cook something sort of special. Tomorrow night? Yes. Mr. Gilsey, I ain't going to be here tomorrow night. What? I'm going to that church convention over in Salinas this weekend. Convention? Yes, sir. I'm taking the bus this afternoon. Don't you remember? I asked you last week if I could go, and you said, sure, Bertie, go. That's what you said. Oh? That's what you said. You said I could go. That's what you said. <laughs> yes, Bertie, I remember now. That's what you said. I know, Bertie. I probably... You want me to stay and cook that dinner, I'll stay, but you said I could go. That's what you said. It's all right. <laughs> you said I could go. I didn't say it. Miss Marjorie didn't say it. Leroy didn't say it. You did. That's what you said. <laughs> Sure, Bertie, go. That's what you said last week. Sure, Bertie, go. That's what you said. Okay, Bertie, take the bus this afternoon. All right, Miss Gilsey, if I will, because that's what you said. <laughs> well, I guess that's what I said. <laughs> you're doing out in the kitchen? I was pressing my blouse. That's the spirit, my dear. With Bertie gone, we'll all just pitch in. Hi, huh? Hi, Leroy. Well, I'm all ready to go out to dinner. Where are we going? To the Summerfield Grill? Yeah, Summerfield Grill? Yes, I guess so. Did Bertie make the bus all right? Yeah, I took her down to the station and saw her off. Good old Bertie. She deserves to get away for a few days. Can we go eat now? I'm hungry. Leroy, sometimes I think you're all stomach. Ah, look who's talking. <laughs> That's not funny, Leroy. Oh, boy, I like to eat in restaurants. Can I have a chocolate Sunday for dessert? Yes, uh, yes. We'll go down just as soon as I call Miss Fairchild. Couldn't get her all day. Excuse me? Make it snappy, Al. Hmm. Well, I'll just tell Adeline we can't have our anniversary dinner here tomorrow night. Birdie gone. She won't mind going to a restaurant. I might even wear my tuxedo. <laughs> Sweet Adeline, Adeline, our second anniversary. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Adeline. Guess who? Oh, you. <laughs> Adeline. Yes. About our anniversary dinner tomorrow night. Oh yes. You know, Throckmorton, that's all I've been thinking about. Me too. Well, you know, I invited you to have dinner here at my house, but... Uh... That was sweet of you, Throckmorton. It shows how much you really care. Huh? But, Adeline... Having me over to your house that way, why, it makes a lonesome little me feel like I'm one of the family. Oh, but you see... It makes our little celebration seem so personal. Most Yankee men don't understand how much these little things mean to a woman. They'd probably want to take me out to some old restaurant... But not you. Oh, no, not me. <laughs> You're sensitive, Rockmore. Sensitive as a violin. I am? Always thought I looked more like a cello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you cute. Well, I'm well, see you tomorrow night. I'll be there with bells on. Bells, yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, dear. Now what am I going to do? Well, I'm ready to go. Huh? Gee, I'm starving. Ready, Yankee? Uh, Marjorie. Yes? Uh, Miss Fairchild's coming to dinner here tomorrow night. And... I thought you were going to take her out to dinner. Well, no, that's not the sensitive thing to do. What? Anyway, Marjorie, I thought you might cook the dinner tomorrow night. Me? Well, after all, you've been studying cooking in your home economics class, haven't you? Yes, but all we've had so far is dessert. All I can make is tapioca. Tapioca? <laughs> well, I don't think we can make a meal on that. Don't you know how to cook meat and potatoes? We don't have that till next semester. Oh, my goodness. We can't wait that long. Uh, can't we talk this over at the Summerfield Grill? Just a minute, Leroy. I want to get this thing settled. I suppose I could cook dinner tomorrow night myself. What? Are you kidding? No, I'm not. I'll have you know, I was considered quite a cook in my younger days when I was batching it. Oh, sure. Well, I was. In fact, I was famous for one of my dishes. Mulligatawny stew a la Gildersleeve. Uncle Mort, you can't be serious about this. You better hire a cook for tomorrow night. Sure. Mulligatawny stew a la Gildersleeve. <laughs> well, you two think you're so smart. I'll just show you. We'll see whether I can cook or not. I'm going to make some stew for dinner tonight. Oh, no. Uncle, I thought you said we'll go to the Summerfield Grill. Well, I've changed my mind. We'll eat dinner right here, and I'll cook it. Oh, for corn 
say. Let's get those little frowns off our little faces now. This is going to be a lot of fun. I'll bet. Now, you two set the table, and the great French chef, Francois Gildersleeve, will go into the kitchen and prepare the meal. Ooh, la la. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> Just a little longer. Beginning to look like a stew, all right, though. Ought to be good. Put everything in I could find. Let's see. Potatoes, leftover meat, succotash, few pig's feet. <laughs> I think we used to put pig feet in mulligatawny stew. Let's see if I missed anything. What's that over there? Uh, some rhubarb. <laughs> Well, might as well throw that in, too. Yeah. That ought to improve the flavor. Might improve the color, too. The apron's a little tight, but it'll loosen it. <sighs> Wonder who that is. Well, hello, Leroy. Oh, the judge. What does he want? Oh, the master's in the kitchen. Well, I just went and see. Better take this apron off. I wouldn't want Hooker to catch me in this thing. Well, Gildy. My, you look very fetching in that pink apron. May I take you dancing tonight, Priscilla? <laughs> Priscilla, you old goat. Well, now that Bertie's gone, I see that you've taken over in the kitchen. What is that witch's broth you're concocting there, Gildy? This happens to be mulligatawny stew. Oh? Smells more like swamp water. <laughs> now look here, Horace. I came by because I thought you and your family might like to accompany me to the Summerfield Grill. No thanks, Judge. We're having our dinner here. Well, if you want to call that stew a dinner, do you know what they're having at the Summerfield Grill tonight, Gildy? No, and I don't care. Well, they're having your favorite dish. Nice, tender pot roast. Pot roast? It'll melt in your mouth. And then there's mashed potatoes smothered in rich brown gravy. Eh? Mm. And a few tasty vegetables, of course. Then some crisp golden cornbread. Beef. Topped off by a flaky deep dish apple pie. Zook. <laughs> of course, you'd rather stay here and eat that stew. That's what you think. Come on, you old goat. We'll all go down to the Summerfield Grill. I can feed the stew to the cat next door. <laughs> He'll eat anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We'll be back with the great Gildersleeve in just a minute. You know, even Leroy, who isn't much concerned with buying food, has some pretty firm convictions about food in general. Darn right. I think all food should taste good. Everyone agrees on that, Leroy. And everyone agrees that parquet margarine does taste good. It's the perfect spread for bread. I'll go along with you on that. Millions of women say tasty parquet is their favorite topping for bread, rolls, muffins, pancakes... And waffles. Don't forget waffles. Boy. Parquet is nourishing, too. 15,000 units of essential vitamin A are added to the wholesome goodness of the choice farm products used in the making of delicious parquet. I keep thinking about those waffles with parquet. Boy. The rich, fresh flavor of parquet improves the best of dishes. Homemakers know that parquet is a quality margarine because it's a craft product. And they're delighted to find that this top quality margarine actually costs less today than it did a year ago. Actually costs less. And tastes better, especially on waffles. Right, Leroy. Next time, friends, ask for parquet margarine. Delicious, nourishing, economical parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. It's made by Kraft. That's why it tastes so good. <laughs> Well, this is the day of the great Gildersleeve's anniversary dinner with Adeline. There's a right way and a wrong way to do everything. And this time, the great man has decided to do something the right way. We find him striding purposely downtown. He's just passing Floyd Munson's barber shop. Hey, Commish. Oh, 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 hello, Floyd. Wait a minute. What's your hurry? Well, I got a little business to attend to this morning. Oh, well, I was sitting out here sunning myself. Things is kind of quiet in the shop this a.m. Yes, well... Got some business to attend to, huh? Yep. What is it? Funky business? 
If you must know, Floyd, I'm going down to the employment agency. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Kamish. What? It's tough to start looking for another job at your age. Floyd, I'm going to the employment agency to hire a cook. Oh. Yes. And now, if you don't mind, I'll How be... How come all... you're hiring a cook? What happened to Birdie? Ye gods, but you're nosy. Birdie went on a little trip, Floyd. I'm having a guest for dinner tonight, so I'm going down and hire a cook. It's all right with you, isn't it? Oh, sure. Thank you. Now, that's cleared up. Obviously. Hiring a cook just for one night, huh? Yes. Is there anything wrong with that? No, I guess not. If you got the dough to throw away. It isn't exactly throwing it away, Floyd. I gotta pay it to somebody. Well, little Floyd, he wants to know how you can get that dinner cooked for nothing. Look, Floyd, I'm not interested in any of your hair-brain schemes. Okay. They only lead to trouble. Okay. I don't even want to hear about it. Okay. I've got my mind all made up. I'm going down to the... You say I can get the dinner cooked for nothing? How? Well, uh, come a little closer, Commish. Who? Huh? Did you ever hear of Hercules Kitchenware? What? Hercules, the kitchenware beyond compare. What's that got to do with it? Well, there was a fella come in the shop yesterday that demonstrates that stuff. Now, the pitch is, he comes around to your house, cooks a meal for you, and tries to sell you some kitchenware. Floyd, I don't want to buy any kitchenware. Who said you did? You just act like you're interested, let him cook the meal, and then you tell him to take his pots and pans and scram. <laughs> I don't know. Not but... only that, he buys all the groceries. He does? Sure. Plays waiter, too, the big chump. <laughs> the whole thing don't cost you a dime. <laughs> well, it doesn't seem quite right if I don't buy anything. Ah, people do it all the time. Let old man Hercules worry. Well, wouldn't hurt to talk to this salesman, I guess. Sure. I got one of his cards in the shop. Why don't you come in and get a haircut, and we'll talk it over. <laughs> I don't need one, but, well, okay. After you, come in. <laughs> oh, good afternoon, Phoebe. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. How are things at the water department? Oh, fine, Phoebe. <laughs> Just thought I'd stop in on my way home and pick up a little ice cream. Quart, I guess. All right. Any particular flavor? Well. <laughs> Hello, Peavy. I want to get something special tonight. What flavor would you uh, suggest? Well, the decision lies with you, Mr. Gildersleeve. I can tell you what I have. There's burnt almond, Dutch chocolate, banana nut, pistachio. Well, what about banana nut? Well, why about it? <laughs> It's good, isn't it? Yes, if you like it. <laughs> well, do you like it? Yes, I like it, but you're not buying it for me. Oh, <laughs> Phoebe, give me any kind. Well, what kind? I don't care. Give me any flavor you have. Well, I have lots of flavors. There's burnt almond, Dutch chocolate, banana nut, pistachio. I'll take burnt almond. Burnt almond it is. Good. Having company tonight, Mr. Jonathan? Yes, Miss Fairchild's coming over. Oh, that's nice. I suppose with Bertie away, Marjorie's cooking a dinner. Well, no. The Hercules Kitchenware Company is cooking it. How's that? <laughs> uh, that is one of their salesmen, uh, Mr. Wright. I talked to him this afternoon and made all the arrangements. Yes, sir. He's going to buy the food, cook the meal, and serve it. Hmm, what's he doing all that for? Him? Well, that's the way he demonstrates his kitchenware. Gets people to buy it. Oh, you're going to buy some kitchenware. He thinks I am, but I'm not. <laughs> He won't mind. Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> What's the matter? You don't think I'm taking advantage of him, do you? Well. Do you? Do you? Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> Peavy, everybody does it. I'll bet you would do it, too, if he came and cooked dinner at your house. Well, why should he come to my house? Mrs. Peavy prepares all our meals. I know that. But if he did come to your house, what would happen? Mrs. Peavy wouldn't let him in. She doesn't know <laughs> him. Ye gods, Peavy, give me my ice cream. There you are, and that'll be 75 cents. Here. Out of a dollar. And there's your change. Thank you, and call again. PV, before I go, I have one last request to make. What's that? You have a can of Tutti Frutti ice cream? Yes. Well, go stick your head in it. Good day. <laughs> your joke's on Mr. Gilbert's <laughs> I like Tutti Frutti ice cream. <laughs> Uncle 
Uncle Mort, this is ridiculous. A salesman cooking our dinner. I never heard of such a thing. Yeah, it sure sounds goofy. Now, children. Suppose somebody at school hears about this. I'll just die. I don't want to hear any more about this. You two go upstairs and start getting ready for dinner. Mr. Wright will be here any minute. What'll Miss Fairchild think? You let your old uncle worry about Miss Fairchild. Now, go on, both of you. Okay. And Leroy. Yeah? Just because we're having company, don't get tongue-tied. I hope you'll know what to say at the table. Sure. This meal comes to you through the courtesy of the Hercules Kitchenware Company. Leroy! <laughs> get upstairs. Sometimes I wonder about our uncle. Me, too. Uh, well, hope everything goes all right tonight. I want Adeline to have a good... Mm, that must be Mr. Wright. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, here's your Hercules kitchenware man, right? Right on the dock. <laughs> yes. Well, and believe me, there's no finer kitchenware than Hercules. Durable, rust-proof? Yes, yes. Won't you come in? Oh, thank you. I'll take those pots and pans out to the kitchen. I'll just put them down here for a minute, if you don't mind. Well, uh... uh, uh and these groceries. Huh. There. Now, Mr. Gildersleeve, before I begin the dinner... I just want you to look at this pot. A beauty, isn't it? How'd you like to have a pot like that for your very own? <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Wright, I didn't promise I was going to buy, you know. No, oh, of course not. There's absolutely no obligation. All I want, Mr. Gildersleeve, is your good wit. That's all you're going to get. I mean, uh... <laughs> uh, Mr. Wright... Yes? Uh, a lady friend of mine, Miss Adeline Fairchild, is coming this evening. Well, that's fine. The more the barrier. Uh, good. I wonder if you'd mind if I didn't tell her you were a salesman, just introduced you as a friend. Why, of course. That's the way we at Hercules like to think of ourselves. Not as salesmen, but as friends. Well, that's a nice thought. I suppose you'd like to start dinner now, so you... Uh, excuse me. Hello, Throckmorton. Um, Adeline, you're early. Well, I got all dolled up in this new taffeta gown, and I just couldn't wait for you to see it. Throckmorton, aren't you going to ask me in? Um, oh, sure. Come in. Uh-huh. Oh, mercy. I didn't know you had company. Uh, yes. Uh, this is Mr. Wright. I mean, Ed, uh, a friend of mine. Uh, how do you do? Uh, Ed, uh, this is Miss Fairchild. Uh, uh, I was just telling you about her. Uh, oh, yes, yes. Well, it's a pleasure to meet such a charming young lady. <laughs> sure. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah. You see, Bertie's away on her vacation, and I asked Ed to cook our dinner tonight. Cook the dinner? Well, cooking is his hobby. Ed isn't happy unless he's bending over a hot stove. <laughs> oh. Well, isn't that nice? And, and look, he brought his own pots and pans. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful set. Oh, uh, yes, and it's Hercules, the kitchenware beyond compare. A complete set. Cost you won't uh, Mr. Wright, I mean, Ed, uh, I guess you'd better start making dinner now, huh? <laughs> oh, now, Throckmorton, don't rush your friend off like that. Why, we're just starting to get acquainted. Yeah, but... Why didn't you tell me you had such an attractive friend? Well, sure, Throckmorton. And why didn't you tell me you had such an attractive friend? Huh? What's the matter, Throckmorton? Try to keep her all to yourself, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Fairchild. Yes? Did anyone ever tell you you looked like Ingrid Bergman? Well, that's a mighty pretty compliment, sir, but you don't really mean that. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> I don't really look like Ingrid Bergman. She looks like Una Merkel to me. <laughs> Come to think about it, Mr. Wright, you bear a close resemblance to Dana Andrews. Oh, no, I don't. Not... Yes, you do. Uh, Dana, I mean Ed. I think you'd better start dinner now. Okay, Frocky. Frocky. Uh, Miss Fairchild, would you like to step out in the kitchen with me and see how I whip up a steak? Wait a minute, I don't think Adeline cares well, much. Well, Throckmorton, I do too. I just love to watch a man in the kitchen. You do? But Adeline... Now, you just stay right here and we'll have dinner all cooked for you in a jiffy. But see you later, Frocky. <laughs> <laughs> long are they going to stay out there in the kitchen? Well, if Adeline thinks I'm going to chase after her, she's mistaken. I'm not jealous. No, sir. Ingrid Bergman. 
She'd rather be with that salesman. What do I care? Wait a minute. He's got a nerve taking her away like that. After all, she's my girl. It's my kitchen, too. I'll show him. Now, look here, Miss... He's gone. So is Adeline. Wonder where they went. Probably holding hands someplace. <laughs> Thrown over for a kitchenware salesman. <laughs> well, that's the last meal he'll ever cook for me. Oh, is not dinner ready yet? I'm starving. Uh, it looks like we'll have to have dinner out, my boy. What? Where's the guy? Don't I'm... ask so many questions, Leroy. Just put your little coat on. We're going down to the Summerfield Grill. Okay. Where do people make up their minds? <laughs> Wait till I see that Floyd. Rock Adeline, where have you been? Well, I had to go over to my house to get some money. Money? What for? So I could buy these pots and pans. What? Well, your friend, Mr. Wright, kindly consented to sell them to me. Wasn't that nice of him? Oh, yes, very nice. <laughs> Luckily, he had an extra sack. Extra sack, yes. Where did he go? Well, he said he was going to go cook dinner for another family. My, that man certainly loves to cook, doesn't he? Uh, yes, he does. Uh, so, Rock Morton, I'm going to make our anniversary dinner with my own little hands. You are? Well, I'm ready for the Summerfield Grill. I got my little coat on. Well, take it off, Leroy. <laughs> what? I've decided we'll have dinner here at home after all. Oh, for boy, what a character. Well, so are you. <laughs> <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. When you buy a spread for the family bread, what do you look for? Quality? Economy? Flavor? Well, choose Parquet Margarine and get the tops on all three counts. Parquet is the margarine of craft quality. It's the perfect topping for rolls, muffins, pancakes, and waffles, as well as bread. Wise housewives say it's their choice for cooking and seasoning, too. You'll love that Parquet flavor, and you'll like the way Parquet helps keep food costs down. Remember, economical parquet margarine actually costs less today than it did a year ago. Try nourishing economical parquet margarine. It tastes so good. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet made by Kraft. Hmm. Wonder who that is. Hello? Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, Phoebe. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I was wondering if you and your family would care to have dinner at our house tomorrow night. Dinner? Well, thank you. But won't that be a lot of work for Mrs. Peavy? No, she won't have to do a thing. The Hercules kitchenware man is going to cook the dinner. What? But I thought you said Mrs. Peavy didn't like salesmen. Well, funny thing. She liked this fellow all right. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes? Do you think Mrs. Peavy looks like Ingrid Bergman? <laughs> P.V., she looks as much like Ingrid Bergman as you look like Dana Andrews. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Good night. <laughs> Good night, folks. Yeah. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry, Adeline Fairchild by Miss Una Merkel. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Ladies, listen. An honest $1.25 value for only 35 cents. That's our amazing offer. You can get a stainless steel cake and pie knife, an honest $1.25 value, a knife with a sparkling six-inch serrated blade, and a gleaming handle of Agatron for only 35 cents, and one top label from a package of Tab Steps, the delicious cheddar cheese food. It's the perfect cake and pie knife for your table. It's perfect for kitchen use. Just send 35 cents and one Phoenix Pabstep package top label to the Phoenix Pabstep Company, Box 1723, Chicago, 77, Illinois. Got that? 35 cents and one Pabstep label to the Phoenix, P-H-E-N-I-X, Pabstep Company, Box 1723, Chicago, 77. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.